and welcome once again to FC Cymru, brought to you by Eat, Sleep, Futty, Repeat, and yes, we're in suits. That's because it's a very special occasion. It sure is. It's the Coaches Conference, which is the very pinnacle of the FAW Trust coaching year. And we get the best coaches from around Britain. No, Alex. No. Best coaches from around the world come here to learn, to soak up knowledge. Thierry Henry is sat right over there. Amazing. It's, what's actually amazing is that Neil Dimmock, the manager oh, of manager. the uh, yeah, your manager yeah, for yeah. the uh, the fans football side, he's got prime place just over here. Ah, well, done. Ah, well done, Neil. Nice uh, anyway, you've got no time for this. You've got to go. No, I haven't. I'm staying for dinner. No, no, no. You've got to go for the women's squad announcements in uh, Swansea. We'll have dinner first. You haven't got time for that. You've got to go. Uh, you're still here. Keep going. Uh, in the programme, then, we've got a love letter to Jess Fishlock, one of our fantastic, most amazing Wales midfielders. We also go and see a fantastic grassroots club called Denby. But first, let's check out more about what goes on here at the National Coaches Conference. Now, keep going. So here we are, then. Another glorious day at Dragon Park. You know, it doesn't happen by accident. They arranged this especially for it. Now, I know what you're thinking. You've seen episode six of FC Cymru and you're wondering, is that the only pair of shorts that Alex has? Well, number one, it's none of your business. And number two, that's not important right now because what's important is what's going on behind me. Now, when Lawrence says people come from all over the world, for once, it's not hyperbole. They really, really do. Marcel Desai has done his badges here. Sol Campbell is over there. David Genela is over there. Thierry Henry picked up his pro license last night. Mido, as an ex-Tottenham Middlesbrough guy, played for Egypt. He did his badges here as well. And that's got me wondering, is there something fishy going on? Is it a bit too easy? I'm going to find out. Is it just, is it an easy course? Is that why you're attracting people? It's just, people come along here because they know full well, it's, I'll just turn up, I get a badge at the end of it, it's double. <laughs> well, yeah, that would be nice if that was the case. I'm sure we'd have a lot more coming through the door, but uh, no, I can assure you it's not that. And uh, unfortunately, we will have people that will fail at whether it's the B licence, the A licence and the, and the pro licence level. We've had people, unfortunately, not succeed in, in completing the course and we take that, you know, as a, as a personal disappointment. Uh, but from our viewpoint, our role here is to help and support the coaches and help them to, to hopefully have a successful career in what is becoming an ever-increasing, challenging industry. I've got a suspicion, right? Because like, all the big names do this, you know, Janela, Henri, Blackmore. I'm just thinking, is it, is it a bit too easy? Is it really easy doing this? What, coaching? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's, you've got, uh, well, usually it's 22 players to control and, you know, you know, you're trying to get something over to them. You're the one with the experience. You've got to try and tell them how you want them to play. We found Ellie. Now, Ellie plays for Yeovil. She also plays for Wales as well. And she's here doing her coaching badges. For one thing, Ellie, quite young to be doing your coaching badges. I know that, that sounds a bit patronising, but you've still got plenty of playing to do. So why are you here? Uh, I did my B licence three years ago. I think just getting on the map as early as possible on the coaching journey, I think, is important. And it develops you as a player. So um, I think the coaching side of it really influences me as a player as well. And kind of the leadership role that I take on the pitch, that comes from kind of what I do here um, and I love to coach you know I love using my experience and building the next generation of, of players and I could, if I can do anything to help then I'd love to do that. I believe you're gold standard accredited then, that sounds, that sounds yeah, pretty Yeah that's with a grassroots programme of course so you know there's a lot of hard work by a lot of people um, that enables us not only with our coach education programme but with our grassroots programme to be recognised by UEFA as a leading association um, and yet we know we've got a lot more to do you know we're not in a situation where we say oh we're gold standard in our grassroots programme we've uh, been accredited again by UEFA for our coach education we recognise within that there are still things that we're, we're uh, aiming to do, aiming to improve so that we never stand still, that's the ethos, that's the culture that we have here now and uh, that will be something we'll be striving for over the next few years. So it's great when you get recognised by UEFA, uh, but at the end of the day it's all the hard work that the coaches put in. You know, you don't get no, if you don't work hard you get nothing 
and it's all about we've all stuck together and yeah financially we, we need help and all that but at the end of the day you know, we qualify for the Euro so obviously it gives something back to the grassroots side of it but at the same time we need top class coaches we need to learn from the top class coaches and that's what we've got here now we've got top class coaches here and uh, you can, we can learn from them and hopefully they'll learn from us as well. All right, fair enough. So it turns out that it's not really easy to do a, uh, a coaching course here at the FAW Trust. Actually, it's really hard, but it's also really, really good. And that's why they attract the sort of quality of people that you've seen here today. Now, what we've seen here is some proper high-level stuff going on in the sunshine here at Dragon Park. But what about a team that's down at the grassroots level? Well, we've been to Denby to meet a team which really is developing its kids at a young age and bringing them right through to the senior setup as well. Lawrence went along to find out more. Kevin and Sean, uh, to be fair, they're probably going to get a bit embarrassed at this, but driving forces behind here at Denby Chaps? Is that fair to say? Is that fair to say, Kev? I think the gentleman to my left is probably a guy. From top to bottom, you can see, you know, the mark of Denby and what you're trying to do here. From, from the from the smallest children to the, to the seniors? Yeah, it started, it's been a long process. It started many, many years ago. I got involved about 15 years ago when my son was in junior football. And uh, yeah, I lived in Denby all my life. And uh, and you want to do something. I particularly want to do something for the community. And the football club at that time needed work doing on it and, and uh, developing in both on the field and off the field. Got a great committee and a uh, group of people around that have been able to develop what you can see. Everybody should do something for their towns, you know, and uh, sort of find out really, you know, like go out there and speak to everybody. It doesn't matter what it is, what, what club, but it's a very important thing. So when uh, we stood here on a sort of fairly sunny April morning on a Sunday, pride is that how you feel? Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, definitely. You're yeah, really, really chuffed at what we've what we achieved here, and uh, yeah, and it's it's, it's, a, it's an ongoing challenge as well. It never ends, which is really good. It's, it's a, and, and you, know, you just know that you'll be able to be involved with this for many years to come. This isn't happened by accident, though, Kev, has it? You know, people all look from the outside and oh, you know, look where they've come from. But it hasn't happened completely by a fluke. It's a lot of hard work and dedication and planning. Most definitely. I, I think um, I played here as a kid. Came through the junior setup and played for the first team at 15. And when I and I look back to the ground, how it how it was then and how it is now, it's it dramatic changes uh, for me. It's it's not just the stand. It, it's just everything here. You know. You look around and the tarmacking's around the pitch and just little progressions chipping away year after year. Um, but it's, it's down to the volunteers. You know, you, you walk in here on match day and there's people at the gates that have played for the club and are proud of them being, it's, it's down to them really. We have a plan, we started you know, about 10 years ago putting it together just so we have a guy, a path to go down so we have a progress and you know, a project by project so we just, yeah, and it, sometimes things can look so difficult and so hard to do but if you break it all down into small little sections over a period of time you can get through jobs and, and nothing's too big because this is, you know, as I, we said before, seven or eight years ago it was really rough down here and there was no fencing and there was vandalism and there was a, yeah, but step by step we've managed to create what we have today which is a sense. And to do that, you just need to be a bit organised and have a plan. And that's a record, visual record for you guys as much. Of course it is, yeah, yeah, it's really good, it's really good and it, and it all shows you where you want to go again and you don't want, yeah, the thing for me is if you do a job, you don't want to go back and do the same job again either, you, you just want to just do a really good job, spend you know, whatever you can afford to spend on something to make sure you know, the, the quality of it will last forever. The stand that we had before was here probably from the 1960s and we're hoping now this new stand will be here for the next 20, 30 years and we won't do anything with it at all. You know, so. Right, come on in chaps. Where do you want to get to? What, where, what's, what is the Denby aim? Yeah, League of Wales, of course. What's the point of playing football if you don't want to, you don't want to win and don't want to succeed and don't want to move forward? It's got an awful lot of work to get there and a massive step to, to get up to that level, both sort of on the on the, what we need, um, but also financially is a huge thing. But if you don't try it, if you don't if you don't work at it, it will never happen. The eclectic world of Welsh football from Newport and the Coaches Conference to Denby Town. What a wonderful club that is. Now to Swansea, where we are at Unit 19 for a day of wonderful Welsh football goodness. Later on, it's going to be the Ellis James podcast. 
Earlier, it was Jane Ludlow's squad announcement ahead of two crucial World Cup qualifiers. But we're here for a very special Q&A this afternoon with Rachel Rowe, with Kaylee Green and with Laura O'Sullivan. So let's go and check out what the girls are saying ahead of those big World Cup qualifiers. Rachel, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How have you been since that England game? How have you settled back into life after you guys really ripped up the headlines in Wales? Yeah, we did. I mean, after the result, uh, I had a lot of texts and stuff personally, uh, congratulations and things like that. A lot of people who I haven't spoken to in a long time who had watched the game, um, who had been there, who watched it um, on the TV. It was just a bit of a surreal moment for me. It was kind of a first. Um, and then for the weeks after, I play with some of the England girls at Reading and um, there was just a lot of banter flying around. So and say, what was their reaction? Yeah, I mean, it was it was a good reaction. It always is a club. I mean, internationals is different. There's no, you know, there's no bad air between us. It's, it is just all fun and games and obviously they wanted to win, we wanted to win and there was a draw, so nobody's Did a winner. Did they accuse you of parking the bus? Did they have a little dig at that? No, they did say it was really hard to break down and that, you know, they didn't play the right way and things, but that's a compliment to us. That's how we want to play, that's how we've been playing. If, if you don't concede, then you don't lose a game at the end of the day. So, yeah, it's a compliment for us to say that we were hard to break down, that's what we thrive off. Right. Why should people come up and support you in Bos against Bosnia at the Liberty Stadium then? Apart from the fact it's your home pitch and you'll be bringing a big load of support, right? Yeah, definitely. I, I hope I see a lot of faces in the crowd that I recognise, obviously being a Swansea girl. People should come and watch. Why not support your women's national team? We're doing great at the moment. Uh, it's only going to get better. And obviously that, that 12th man egging us on from the sidelines, it'll give us that good push. I mean, we're playing against a difficult team, hard to break down. They probably play the way that we play against other teams. Um, but definitely, they should come and watch. Come and see what women's football is all about. And it's, a, it's an amazing atmosphere. And you'll see the passion from myself, the girls, everybody who's involved. You'll see how much we want it. Well, listen, one of the stars on the show, apart from yourselves, of course, uh, is Jess Fishlock, right? So we do this thing where we do love letters to certain players. We've done Aaron Ramsey, we've done Ben Davis. It's Jess's turn, right? So your memories or what you think of when you think of Jess? Ooh, Jess Fishlock. Nah, I take it back. <laughs> nah, I'm joking. Jess is a phenomenal athlete. She's the ultimate professional, the most professional person I've ever met in the football world. She knows exactly what to do on the field. You can go to her at any point, get some advice. I've done a lot of that. I've got to know her more and more over the last few years since I've been in the Welsh setup. She's a lovely girl and she would do anything for Wales. And for me, like that's massive. Her passion is phenomenal and I know she'll play. You're to stop. I'm welling up here, I'm welling up. <laughs> right, I think we'd better play that Jess Fishlock. Uh, tribute to Jess. <laughs> Rachel, thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. <laughs> You're going to take us to the World Cup, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. What does the name Jess Fishlock mean to you and what she's done for women's football? Um, she is an icon for women's football. She's like a, she's like a Gareth Bale for women's team really, isn't she? Like... When you think of Jess Fishlock, what do you think? Uh, I think about you know sort of the, the experience that Jess has had and the, the fact that she acts as a role model for so many players you know, sort of within the Welsh game. We're little old Wales at the end of the day and you know that she's she's a massive talent on the international stage. When I wake up Yes, Fishlock, number 10, Wales, history maker. She's always had a massive influence on everybody she's played with, I think. She's a wonderful player on and off the pitch. She brings so much to the team and the squad, and it's no accident that she's, she's the first person to get to 100, I think. It says everything about her. This is the thing with Jess, you kind of want three of her, do you know what I mean? So that she can defend and then go forward as well. For us girls, it's an honour to be on the pitch with her, and you know, for a female to actually reach 100 before the men, um, you know, it's massive. She is so tough and so hard working. That's just on the pitch. Get off the pitch. That girl flies across the world to come back and represent her country. And that shows that you put the, uh, 
the hard work in, you can achieve. The commitment levels are absolutely ridiculous. She's flown back from Melbourne, she flies back from Seattle. Seeing a lot of what she does and how much Wales means to her seems to come across a lot. Most cap player in Welsh football, over 100 caps, role model, you know, not only for, for women, for, for blokes as well, you know. So, what, can you, what more can you say, really? I think it's nice to have that icon for the women's team, someone for young kids to look up to. You know, one of the most prestigious in, in this Welsh setup. How important is she to this Wales squad? I, I suppose you could say, I mean, um, any team needs their talisman, um, especially at international level. And I mean, so you look at the past with the men's team, and at the moment Gareth Bale probably is, is that talisman. And I think uh, Jess Bishock is probably the female equivalent. Um, she's played abroad, she's played at the highest level, um, she, you know, she's, she's one of the top scorers. People may, a lot, I should imagine a lot of the squad members look at her as um, a, a guiding light, I suppose. So um, I would say she is probably as critical to the women's team as Gareth Bale is to the men's team. You know. I was very disappointed actually when she did break that record that some of the negative comments about, oh, the women only play friendly, so totally unacceptable because she's, she's travelled from the States, she's travelled from Australia. She's just always there. I mean, she's got 100, I think it's 108 caps now. You can't, she's Wales's top cap holder, men or women. The woman's just insane. She's fantastic. And that's it for this episode of FC Cymru. I hope you've enjoyed the journey right across the wonderful eclecticness of Welsh football. <laughs> what are you doing? What? Well, I thought there was a World Cup squad announcement, look, and I thought there were two games coming up. I just wanted to come down and see. It's like £5 for an adult, two quid for children and seniors. That's a bug at Bosnia, Russia, off to the World Cup. Brilliant. He's in the wrong place, but he's absolutely right. You can't be here anyway. You just threw me out of the coaches' conference. It was days ago, man. Keep up, keep up. I think we should wrap it up. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Um, as ever, if you want to reach out and touch us, those social media details are across the bottom of the screen. But from us at Unit 19 in Swansea, we'll catch you next time. Ta-da. Cheers, guys.